Hey folks, we're here today at Daisy Hill and we're going to look at some geology. We're going to look for a lost gold mine. We're going to see if we can find it. But I'm going to get right over. Never come to Daisy Hill on a weekend. My God, there's people everywhere. Let's give it a go. It's nice to see the Robinson family made it back. It really is. Well, folks, this is where it started. Daisy Hill with the Dennis family, James and Mary Dennis, which I'm probably standing on, apologies, and the rest of their family. All buried in this nice little private cemetery at the entrance to the Daisy Hill Forest, quite appropriate, on their old land. Well, folks, here we are, just above that um, Gladstone Road over here. You see Bogger Road down there. We're going to head down to Daisy Hill today. So here we go. We're going to hightail that over Mount Cravat there, one of my favourite parts of Brisbane. And we're going to go down and have a look at uh, what is really, uh, it's pretty much a history of Daisy Hill in this area we're in. So we're just coming down. That lake straight ahead there is Dennis Lake, named after the Dennis family. And pretty much everything you're looking at there was owned by the Dennis family at one stage or another. Started off fairly modest, ended up owning half the place. That's where I think the gold mine was, just down in that little valley there, or one of the gold mines, the shaft, but the, there was another one. And I think that was over here, and we'll go into that in the video. Just somewhere in this gully where you see that little dam there, probably along here, not sure where. All still private property, can't go in there, but yeah, probably could. Anyway, the geology's right and the description's right. So somewhere in there is probably a shaft, not a shaft, sorry, a drive. There's the old quarry over there. If you want to go for a swim with about 200 other people, go there on a nice day. 200, make it 2,000, there's a lot there. You know, there's the city, we're not that far out of the city. Let's have a look at the history of this family. A very good place to start. Well, folks, Today we're going to talk about the Dennis family, but in particular James Dennis. But yeah, the Dennis family to some degree. That's a big family. We're not going to talk about them all. James Dennis was born at Rosvin Cottage. Rosvin, by the road, by the way, means rose vine. At Sand Creek near Penzance in Cornwall on the 7th of June, 1842. Quite a while ago. He arrived in Brisbane on the Flying Cloud on the 19th of February in 1864, so he was about 21 years old by then. Just as a fun fact, when the Flying Cloud returned in 1869, it appears to coincide with the first sighting of sparrows in Brisbane. So that's nice. Another introduced European pest. James Dennis married Anne uh, Mary Ann Markwell on the 8th of the 4th, 1867. He'd been working at a farm on Slacks Creek and uh, he met her. She was working there as well. So there you go. Mary Ann's family came to Australia on the ship the Chasley in 1849. Now, the Chasley was one of three ships chartered by the old Reverend John Dunmore Lang to bring free immigrants to Brisbane, Australia, and the other ships were the Lima, and of course, the Fortitude. Anyway, they had got a better life, but they got ripped off. Oh, there's another video on that somewhere. I'll dig it up. The couple settled in Daisy Hill, which was then called Slacks Creek, I think, in 1870, after being married in 1867. So they lived in Brisbane for a while till they got their, selected their land. Mary Ann Markwell, who is... Uh, 
his wife, was born in 1849 at St Ives in Huntingdonshire, England. And she died in 1920 at Daisy Hill, so she lived an amazingly long life. She had 18 children. I have no idea how many pregnancies, because it's a long time ago. 18 children, and they did not all survive. She was on the ship's manifest as a baby infant. So, yeah, she was probably just born before they left. She may have even been born on the boat. Don't know. Dennis's selection was located about eight kilometres north of Bean Lee. And he called it, get this, Dennis Vale. What a great name. I said they had 18 children. And James actually died on the 10th of October, 1893, at Dennis Vale, uh, which was by then what the family property was known as. I think uh, he's an amazing couple, an amazing pioneer of Brisbane, but he was not the gold mine guy. No, no. The gold mine guy was Joseph Dennis. He is the chosen one! The youngest son of James and Mary Dennis. And he was born in 1891. Now, the first gold mine... Yeah, there's two gold mines. The gold mines, guys. So the first mine was started in 1934. The shaft, not a tunnel or a drift, a shaft. It may be the key to the whole plan, get it? Got it, good. About 425 feet deep, or about 120 meters, was sunk along the southern boundary of the forest. And we will have a look at that. And he found a vein that contained oxides of iron and manganese, plus a little gold. Needless to say, he didn't go ahead. Little gold being the problem, not a lot of gold. And uh, we'll have a look at some of the geology in that. The second mine, yes, there were two mines, which is a, he drove a tunnel into the side of a hill from a gully that runs through a selection uh, and a small amount of gold was found in a quartz vein. So we'll also have a look where I think that is. Um, just look at the geology and where it's described in some of the historical books. Uh, we will see where that is. Anyway, let's have a look into this a little further. Commercial time. Hey gringos, if you want to help T-Rox fight for justice in this lawless land, you can buy me a coffee, because T-Rox runs on coffee, and help me stare down these other hombres. Because you know, coffee is the root of no evil. Well, folks, what we're looking at here is a geology map of the area. This is the Tingalpa Formation, mainly sedimentary. This is a piece of the Woogaroo Group. That's up near the car park. I think that's important. And this is our Narrenly Fernvale groups. And the second mine is certainly in this group. The first mine is in the other group, for sure. And uh, they're mining different stuff. I think with the first mine, they were going for what they thought was a deep lead which is a bunch of uh, quartz, sand and gravel that's been, or called wash, trapped in a sedimentary formation that, that may contain gold. They would have panned gold. And if you look at the top end of this area, uh, the Narrenly Fernvale Formation goes back underneath this at about a 40 degree angle. So there's a good reason to think that. There really is. By the by, nothing to do with gold. This is a radioactive isotope formation of the area. Um, that green is thorium. They're the two mine locations. That's a lot of thorium for Brisbane, let me tell you. And nothing to do with any of this. Here's a magnetic map of the whole area. Look at the volcanics down through the Capella Bay area. Redland Bay. Hey, I wonder where the red comes from. Decomposed basalt is where it comes from. So what is that relevant here is the location of the second mine. It was somewhere over in this Narrenly Fernvale bed. These black lines you can see here, if you've got a 4K TV, they stick out a bit more. These things are faults or fracture lines. This is where geothermal fluids can come up and deposit minerals. These are an indication of mineralization. 
And when you look at this diagram, which we looked at earlier, uh, you can see these beds duck underneath uh, the um, Tingalpa formation. So I'd say they were looking for deep leads sitting on top of the shale, but in the Tingalpa formation with the first mine as well. Now, if you and I were going to go down here, we're going to do a bit of prospecting together, which would be illegal, I might add. With our metal detectors and our geology hammers, where would we go? Where would be the best spot? Well, I'll show you where I would go. Right here. Because we've got the right topology. We've got a fracture line or a fault with geothermal fluids. And we've got a steep rock face that we can look through the cross section of the rock. Anyway, we should do that one day. Except we can't because it's illegal. So back over to the first mine over on uh, Daisy Hill Road, if you want to call it that. This is somewhere where I think it was. It might have been a little below that, but why would it be there? Well, this mine was 400 feet down. That's 120 metres. Now, this location's just over a kilometre from the nearest Naranli rock. So if we took 400, they're nowhere near it. It's way deep. At this distance, it would be nearly a kilometre down. However, the intersection of the Woogaroo group and the Tingalpa group, which is another opportunity for a deep lead, I suspect is what they were getting to. So they would have dropped a shaft down trying to find a gravel bed of an ancient river to get that gold out of, and I would imagine they were, of course, unsuccessful. The other mine, I think they were following a quartz vein where they found sulphides, but again, there was just too little gold considering the amount of rock that Naranli Fernvale bedrock doesn't fall out of the hill. It's a lot of digging. It's the same rock that they were digging in up at uh, Mount Nebo. Well, folks, all the written evidence says that Mr. Dennis sunk a shaft. There's another brief evidence to the Daisy Hill Road mine shaft that should be protected under a heritage listing. But really, this is the uh, Tink Alp formation, sandstone. But as you saw from that mineralization, there's gold here. I'm sure there is, absolutely. So let's talk about how these old timers decided there was gold here. I don't think they uh, did a geomagnetic survey or they did a. This man Stapleton radar, look at that, amazing. Or they did a uh, um, geophysics survey of the area. They went down the creeks and with a pan. And they looked for traces of gold or traces of gold indicating elements. Gold indicating minerals like phosphates, fool's gold, sulphides, particularly sulphides in this area. And they would have just traced that up the creek, keep panning till it disappeared and I'm sure it led them to here. So that creek has eaten right up to the edge of the ridge here. That drops off, I think I measured it, it's about 40 metres. And in that lantana there is a track, because the LIDAR picked it. But unfortunately, it's private property, we can't go in. But I will show it to you on the LIDAR and I'll point out where I'm standing here, you see that little peninsula of land there, there's a track runs down there, straight down into the base there. Now, these tracks up here, let's be real, they weren't put in for recreation, they were put in to get timber. And they would have been getting timber out of here for a very long time. But anyway, let's go along a little further and just have a look at a little more geology. I think there's some just up here we can have a look at. Well, here's a bit of a mystery geonerds. I just picked this up. It's not in situ, it's come from the quarry, I think, just up the road. But look at the mica in this. If you look really closely, there's grains of sand in it as well. I'm thinking it was igneous, but it can't be. 
there is some sort of lines in it. I think this is a horn felt. I think this is a piece of quartzite uh, that has been well and truly cooked and pressured uh, on the edge of an igneous intrusion. And I think this is the rock they're mining in that quarry. Oh, folks, we're just around the corner from the junction of the Tingalpa Formation and the Narrowly Fernvale Formations, and there we go. Sandstone. Beautiful looking sandstone, just poking through the road. Oh, folks, you can see why they thought there was gold here. There's a lot of quartz in there, there's a lot of mineralization. And this is in the Tingalpa Formation. This is like a sandstone. I can't hit it with a hammer or in a car park. I'll find a piece we can though. Look at the oxidization in that. That's fantastic. Well, folks, we're back up near the car park, I suppose. And here's a gully, just it ridges right here. There's a small track in front of us there, but that's private property, we're not allowed on there apparently. This is a gully full of lantana, it's a very steep gully, and there is exposed rock in the bottom of it. This is a very good candidate for where they drove the Daisy Hill if you want to call it, or the Dennis gold mine. You know, you can say what you like about Lantana, it's garbage, it's organic barbed wire, it's shit to get through, it's toxic, but it is pretty, I must admit. That burst of colour in the bush is a, wel a welcome sight. Folks, we're back here at Hazy Hill today to look at the second gold mine. There are two gold mines down here, both started by the same person. Obviously both looking for the same goal, but they're looking for it in different places. So what we're gonna to do today, is gonna to have a look at the second goal, which was in Quartz. It was a very different goal mine to the one down at the entrance to the Daisy Hill conservation area. Anyway, more when there's something interesting to look at. Just coming up a small hill here folks and this ridge really marks the junction between the Tingalpa formation and the Narron Lee Fernvale formation right here so on this ridge there's a 300 million year gap so we'll have a look see if we can find it Look at this forest. Looks exactly like the Burbank forest. Same age, full of she oaks, iron barks, stringy barks. I wouldn't profess to know them all, but anyway. And they're all about the same age. There's no really old trees in there. I'll find a really old tree, I'll point it out to you. Haven't seen one yet. I think there's axes and chainsaws being used here a lot. Well, this is a map from. Um a book which is fairly reliable and uh, this is narrow as they can do it portion 381 gold found here well by the time Joey was doing this they actually owned quite a bit of that they'd been horse trading land over the years and uh, here's portion 381 here as you can see on a cadastral map so yeah um, I think our projection of where the gold comes from is probably not too far off now, I asked my AI to tell me what this mine looked like. Okay, it had a shot. This is a guy called I.C. Ball. He was the geologist, the government geologist, who inspected the mine and said he thought that the gold was a bit light. You wouldn't be able to mine it. I.C. Ball, really? Wow. 
And here's our old mate, the asparagus fern, ready to slit you open with those little scalpels. It's everywhere, folks. Very mature mango trees, guys. Look at the trunks on them. I'm only conjecting this, that this was probably the side of the second property called Oak Hill. Because those mango trees were planted a long time ago. Well, folks, I've been into that uh, gold mine site at the end of the shaler track and I can't get to it. There's just too much lantana and too much uh, asparagus fern. It's like organic barbed wire on top of organic barbed wire. So I will come back to this site because I think it's interesting, but I'll have to wait till after a bushfire when that garbage has been cleared out. I am a little disappointed. I did try and show it to you, but it's a beautiful place. You should come down and have a walk around in this Daisy Hill conservation area. It's fantastic. Well, folks, this is my target for gold mine number two. And uh, when I can get back here and the uh, this underbrush is cleared, I want to have a good look at this because it's an interesting thing. That quarry there, it flows the other way. It's never, it does come into this valley, but way downstream. This area down in here intrigues me. There's been human intervention and mechanical works here. Why? Well, folks, the Dennis family did a great job. This place is amazing. I want to, uh, definitely come back and uh, I'll bring my gold pan there's just no water here at the moment it's winter it's in June so I can't pan anything not that it's legal you can always have a bit of a scratch but anyway uh, this, this forest is quite interesting here actually this end of the forest folks seems to be a little bit less mangled there are some older trees here some of those trees in there are probably a hundred years old but there's nothing older than that. And there should be. So, you know, the good stuff was cut out. Well, there we go, folks. The two lost gold mines of Daisy Hill. I hope you found this informative. If you do, and you dig the vibe, like and subscribe. And you know what I'm gonna say, keep, keep rocking. T-Rex out. out.